Hi guys, I'm Jim Thompson and welcome to Six String Studies. Today we're going to be looking at restringing an acoustic guitar. For this we are going to need a string winder, a pair of wire cutters and a tuner. We also need a guitar. Let's get to the lesson. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get our trusty string winder, put it onto the tuning peg, and then start unwinding. So we need a lot of flap in these strings here. Yeah, we're going to do the same with all of them. So now, very flappy. Here's the favourite bit, we're going to cut the strings. Okay, so now the strings are nice and loose, there's no tension on the neck at all. We're just going to grab our string and cut it. Now I would re recommend you don't get too close to this, you need to stand a little bit away so you don't get it into your eyes. It does happen sometimes, so just be careful. Or if you're worried, just shut your eyes as you do it, that's what I do. One. It's quite satisfying this. There we are. Right, now what we're going to do is actually get the strings off the uh, tuning pegs. Uh, again, be careful here because they do kind of spring away if you're not careful. And I'm just going to actually do it by hand so it's less dangerous for my eyes. There we go. Pretty quick. And you'll notice here that they're coming straight off. There's no knots for me to cut through or anything like that. There are tuning methods. Uh, which are perfectly valid, which use kind of knots to tie them on, or little crimps, that sort of thing. I found I don't even need to do that. If, as long as you've got enough winding on there, it doesn't affect your tuning at all. Okay, next we'll look at the, uh, the bridge pins. Okay, so now we're gonna remove the bridge pins here. I've got my little string winder, and you'll see on the edge there, can you see this? There's little bridge pin getter outer. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. Little clip thing there. So you're just gonna put it, against the bridge pin here, so the clip, the crescent there is going next to the bridge pin. Hold the string and just pull up and they're quite stiff. Okay, I'm going to do that for all six. And then we're just going to remove the strings. Now I tend to tie these into a little knot like this just to keep them safe. And again, away for the eyes. Also, you don't tread in them, which is uh, quite a painful experience if you've ever done it. There we are. Okay, it's at this point when all the strings are removed, we're gonna take a cloth and we're just gonna clean all the bits on the headstock here and on the bridge that we can't normally, well, not easily get to, just to uh, get rid of the dust, that sort of thing, give the neck a quick wipe down. We're gonna be oiling the neck anyway, but let's get rid of the dust. We'll do the same here against the bridge Normally collects, collects around here, maybe at the back as well. It's just a good practice to keep it clean. Also against the neck. Anywhere you want, just get it, get rid of that dust. There we go. Okay, another thing we could do with using, it's not strictly necessary all the time, I tend to do it every time I change strings anyway, is lemon oil, okay? You can get this in guitar shops, not the sort of thing you buy from a supermarket. Not lemon juice, lemon oil, okay? So we take the oil, spray a little bit onto our cloth, and we're just going to wipe in between the frets, like this. Don't need too much on there. This is going to stop the neck from looking tired, cracking, that sort of thing. It just basically keeps it fresh. That's all we need. We're just going to let that dry. should take about two minutes. See you then. Okay, the other thing we need, obviously, when we're restringing, are strings. This is a set of Martin 11 to 52 gauge. It's a whole set. Cost me about nine pounds this morning, um, but you can get them anywhere between eight and ten pounds, or I suppose that about ten to twelve dollars, something like that. Uh, this is 11.52, as I said, which means they're about average in in thickness, about average gauge. The higher the gauge, the more tone you're going to get from your playing. Okay. 
uh, but it is more difficult to do things like bends and vibrato and that sort of thing. So I've gone for 11 to 52s, but you can experiment to see what you like. Okay, so let's open these up. So here we have our strings, okay? They should all be labeled, all manufacturers do this. Uh, they'll label them either with a gauge number or they'll usually put a gauge number and the, what string it is. This is the low E string, so the thickest string, okay? So we're gonna start with this, this one, work our way through them all, and then we'll uh, see how we do after that. Okay, so let's just get the string out. This one is the low E, as I said earlier. Be very careful when you open these, because they ping out. Okay, then we've got our bridge pin, and we're gonna line it up so the little groove there is facing towards the neck, okay? So we put our string in first. I'm just gonna put this in to the low E string hole. Put the pin behind it and push down. I'm pushing down here and then I'm gonna pull up on that E string to keep it in there. Okay, I'm gonna do the same with all the other strings. And there we are. All the bridge pins are in, the strings are in. What we're gonna do now is wind them on. Now I will say, as you start winding these on to the, uh, the headstock, you may need to just check that they're not pulling these pins out because they sometimes will do that, okay? So if it does, just hold your finger on, push it back in and keep tightening. Eventually it will settle down. All right, let's get to the winding. Okay, so we've got our E string, our low E string, the, eight, the, uh, the, the sixth string. We're gonna put it through the hole here on the tuning peg, he says. There we go. We're gonna pull it through. And now what we're gonna do is use three fingers roughly on the second fret wire, okay? So this is gonna give you how much clearance you need or how much um, string you need to wind on, okay? With that done, I'm just gonna gently hold it here and crimp the string back on itself, okay? That's gonna give me roughly how much I need to wind on. We may need to adjust it, but that's roughly roughly it. I'm not doing any knots or anything here. Uh, in my experience, that's a little bit unnecessary, and I've never found it to affect the tuning at all. So I'm just gonna grab the string winder and we'll wind them all on. Just another thing to mention, while I'm winding this, I'm gonna be maintaining pressure on the string by pressing down with my finger near the string winding uh, post, okay? So, string winder. And we're going to wind it. And as we wind it, we're going to wind it so that the strings come anti-clockwise or away from the center of the headstock, all right? So we're going to do it this way. Maintaining pressure. You may need to lift it up like that so it clears your finger. And the, the reason we use a string winder is this, if I did this by hand, well, let's show you. If I did this by hand, look how slowly it turns. Watching that string go past my face there. Very slowly, okay? So we use a string winder just to speed up the job. And you'll see it's starting to get a little bit tight now. Make sure it sits in the nut, uh, in the little grooves there. I'm just gonna check the other end. So it's starting to pull on the peg here, so I'm just gonna push that back in as I discussed earlier, and I'm gonna keep checking that as I go. Just checking the peg there. And, and again, it will settle down in a moment. We're not looking to tune it at this point, we're just getting it a little bit tight, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Go ahead, sorry, I hate that expression. I'm gonna go and do that now with all the rest of the strings. Actually, just before I do that, before I wind the rest of the strings on, I'm just gonna cut most of the string off here, okay? So it's not going in my eyes. I always leave a little bit on. If it goes wrong, I, I like to have a little bit spare to, to play with. That should be fine.
So as you can see, I've wound all six strings on. I haven't tuned them at all. And that's the next job. Okay, for the tuner, I'm using this Korg. Very accurate uh, and lightweight, and the battery lasts forever, it seems, uh, as long as you don't leave it on, that is. Uh, I'll put an affiliate link down in the, the description below, but you can use any tuner. So I'm tuning, again, anti-clockwise as I look at this tuning peg, okay? And I'm just turning it quite slowly whilst looking at the tuner. Now, when the tuner goes, it will be something like it will go green, either there'll be a light that goes green, or it will say E. That's when you stop initially. So it's roughly, it's getting there now, slightly over. Come on. There we are. We're gonna do the same for the A string. Roughly there, there we are, and carry on through. Okay, so they are roughly in tune at the moment. It's not too bad. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna stretch the strings in. And most people forget to do this, but it's really important, okay? So we're gonna hold the strings, pull up with our right hand, just a little bit, making sure the bridge pin doesn't come out. Move along like this. This is gonna get rid of some of the stretch of the string. So although this was in tune, now it's not. I'm gonna do that a few times. On each string. I just thought I'd uh, explain in a little bit more depth about what I mean about this tuner, the lights going green. Then, or the needle will come to the middle. In this case, the needle comes to, to the middle and the light goes green. So you'll have something similar to that. Like to that. Even if it's uh, an app, they all operate in the same way. So I'm gonna play the E string. You'll see it's dead on. If it wasn't dead on, the red light and the green light are on, showing that it's a little bit flat. So I can just tune up to it. Always tune up to pitch, not from uh, above pitch downwards. It just helps maintain uh, tuning stability. Roughly there. Okay, so the only thing that, that remains to do now is to just get rid of the excess string here. I'm gonna get as near to the string post as I can. I'm gonna get as close as I can to it without obviously cutting into the, the wound string. You're going to hold the other end so that it doesn't ping off. And you're going to do that for all of them. So I've snipped all the ends off, we're all nice and tidy. I've done it, given it a final tune. Seems to be pretty good. Now, just one final note, because these are new strings, you will still have to occasionally uh, tune them like you would on any guitar. But because uh, although we've done the stretch test, you know, the, uh, the pulling, 
we still will have stretch in there so occasionally you're going to have to rectify that by tuning so what i would do is leave this for an hour come back give it a tune maybe do that once more because it has to settle in and then you should be good to go so there you go guys that's how i restring an acoustic guitar i hope you found the video informative if you did give me a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and we'll see you next time bye